This lecture is presented by John Moffat of Open Tuition. For other free lectures, visit opentuition.com. All right, we're working through the uh, June 2015 paper F9 exam. Uh, uh, we're in the middle of section B. I'm now going to look at question three. So look at the requirements, first of all, uh, part A. Advise whether the factors offer is financially acceptable to ignore seven marks. So it's clearly on the working capital management, management of receivables, and it's, going to be, I think it's obvious there's going to be arithmetic here. Part B, briefly discuss how the credit worthiness of potential customers can be assessed. Three marks. So let's start with uh, part A, obviously, and um, add some a quick read. The finance director of Widnor has been looking to improve the company's working capital management. Uh, there's revenue from credit sales of 26.75 million a year. And although its terms of trade require all credit customers to settle invoices within 40 days, on average, customers have been taking longer. Approximately 1% of credit sales turn into bad debts, which are not recovered. Trade receivables currently stand at 4.458 million and Widnor has a cost of short-term finance of 5% a year. The finance director is considering a proposal from a factoring company, which was invited to tender to manage the sales ledger, on a with recourse basis. They believe they can use uh, their expertise to reduce average receivables days to 35 days, while cutting bad debts by 70% and reducing admin costs by 50,000 a year. A condition of the agreement is the company would also advance with 80% of the value of invoices raised at an interest rate of 7% a year. Uh, and it will charge an annual fee 0.75% of credit sales. Assume there are 360 days in a year. All right, now you can set out your workings in several ways. It doesn't matter, the end result will be the same. What I always prefer to do, I think it's faster, safer, easier, is I'm going to list what costs there will be over a year if we employ the factor. We're also in a moment going to list what savings or benefits there will be over a year if we employ the factor. And once we've got them all, then we can look to see if there's a net saving or a net extra cost, uh, and the decision itself will be obvious. Remember, as in all Section B questions, um, it's the workings that matter. It's the workings that get the marks, not the final uh, answer. And so not only, as always, be neat, make sure the marker can follow your workings, even if you get the wrong figures, if you're doing it right, you'll get most of the marks. But also, do go for the easy bits first. There are one or two, as we were reading through, I noticed there are one or two very, very easy figures. Why not get those marks uh, first, quickly, before you spend time on the harder, the more time-consuming things? What I mean is, as we're reading, I noticed one straight away, the very, very last uh, sentence, next to the last sentence, Nokvi will charge an annual fee of 0.75% of credit sales. That's an obvious extra cost, the annual fee. And it should be easy. It's 0.75% a year of their credit sales, well in the second line, their credit sales are 26.75 million. And so whatever else is easy or hard, that makes easy. 0.75% of 26.75 million, 200,625. Anything else? Well, still in that third paragraph, three, four lines down, he said, 
they, uh, that knock fee, the factor, they believe they can reduce admin costs by 50,000 a year. So again, a very, very obvious one. A saving we'll make by employing the factor is we'll save admin fee, admin costs, what did it say, 50,000 a year. There's one more, but make sure you've read carefully. It said slightly further up the question, but still in the third paragraph. They can cut bad debts by 70%. Now, I told us the last sentence of the first paragraph that at the moment 1% of credit sales are bad debts. Using the factor will reduce bad debts, so will save will reduce them by 70%. Now, always be careful here. It says that uh, they're going to manage the sales ledger on a with recourse basis. Now, if it's with recourse, we will still suffer bad debts, but there'll be fewer. Had it been without recourse, if the factoring had been without recourse, we'd have had no bad debts. We'd have saved the entire amount. But here it's with recourse, so we will save but we'll save 70% of what we're currently suffering. We're currently suffering 1% of credit sales. And so the saving 26.75 million currently 1%, we'll save 70% of that, a saving of 187,250. And so there are three easy uh, figures there. That won't have uh, got us our 50% yet to pass the question, but we should be able to get those very quickly. Uh, at least we've got some marks, which is a nice start. However, now let's look at the other two items, which well, perhaps will need slightly more work. One is, which should be immediately clear what we're talking about, is that um, employing the factor is going to reduce um, our receivables because they're collecting faster. And if we have lower receivables throughout the year, it'll save us interest on our short-term finance. So there'll be interest saved on lower receivables. Now I'll come back to that in a moment. It will need a little bit of workings. But that is a standard benefit uh, of employing a factor. Get the money sooner, lower receivables, less interest. Uh, rather separately, and I'll do the working separately, um, the factor, towards the end of the third paragraph, the factor is going to advance us 80% of invoices raised and charges interest. So we'll discuss what that means when we come to the workings, but there is going to be extra payment to the factor, uh, interest on advances. So I'll say more about it um, <coughs> when we come to the workings, but these two, we will need a bit of workings. And I'm going to keep the two very much separate. So let's look first of all at the interest saved on lower receivables, workings one. Currently, we've got receivables of, well, the question tells us, um, second paragraph, that line there, Receivables currently stand at 4.458 million. If we employ the factor, they'll collect the money in sooner. And forget anything about the advances for the moment. If they collect the money in sooner, uh, receivables will be lower. So let's work out the new receivables. And the question tells us, where is it? They'll reduce average receivables days to 35 days. 
And so what will the average receivables be? 35, it says 360 days in a year. So 35 360ths of our total credit sales are 26.75 million. And so the new receivables They fall to 2600694. So, still ignoring the advances, uh, if we employ the factor, there'll be a fall in receivables throughout the year of the difference. Of 1857306. And the reason that'll benefit us, lower receivables um, will save, throughout the year, will save short-term uh, interest. And it says it's 5%, so the interest saving at 5%, well, 5% of that, 92.8675. So it wasn't too bad, we can go back, fill that in on my schedule, 92.865. Alright, well what's left? These advances. Now if there were no advances, that would be the end of it. Collecting 35 days, save that much interest and so on. However, what's going to happen is that some of um, our receivables, even though it took them 35 days to collect, instead of making us wait 35 days, they'll uh, lend us the cash immediately, but they'll charge us interest. So they're effectively going to be lending us money for 35 days. And they're going to charge interest of 7%. Now, I'll show workings too, but what's going to happen? Appreciate, if they give us advances, because we'll be getting money in even sooner, we'll be saving even more at 5%. We'll be getting the money in even sooner than um, the 35 days. But although we'll be saving 5% on the money they give us, they'll be charging us 7%. And so on any advances, there'll be extra interest on these advances at the difference of 2%. Get the money in sooner. We're saving 5% on the early money. We're paying them 7% for the benefit so on any money we get in advance, there's an extra 2%. However, how long are they charging the interest for? They're only giving it us 35 days in advance. So the interest will only be 35, 360ths of 2%. And how much over the year are we going to get in advance? Well, it says somewhere... Yeah, they'll advance 80% of the value of invoices raised. So the whole year, we'll be getting in advance and therefore charged interest on 80% of our credit sales. And so the interest will be 26. 80% is what will be advanced overall. And the interest... 2% times 35 three sixteenths. 46, uh, sorry, 41611 per year. So let me put that on the schedule and we finished. 4611, sorry, I'm Oh, I've lost it. 41611. I've got everything there, so let's now make the recommendation. Uh, what are the total costs if we employ the factor? 26625 plus 41611. 
Uh, it could be 242, 236 extra cost per year as against savings per year of Three thirty one one five. So as it turns out, there'll be a net saving of the difference eighty seven eight seven nine per annum. And don't lose a silly, maybe half mark. The question did actually say, advise whether it's financially acceptable. Well, it may only be half a mark. Um, you get that mark for the right advice on your answer. And here, because it was a saving, um, you'd advise that it is financially acceptable. So there we are. It takes a bit of time, but it's like everything. Once you've learnt the uh, technique, it's boom, boom, boom. Uh, in the middle of an exam, there are obviously lots of places you can make silly mistakes. But do, do remember, as I keep saying, that it's not that final answer that's seven marks or zero. Each bit is marked separately. Uh, and so you should still be able to get decent marks on it. But it makes it so important that your workings are, are, are certainly neat enough so that the marker can follow what you're doing. You know, if you've made a silly mistake or any mistake, calculating that, for instance, because they can see what I was trying to do, I'll still get most of the marks, even if uh, my arithmetic was wrong. Anyway, part B. All right, it's only three marks. Not worth spending much time. You're not expected to write much. But do write something, you know. Anything sensible will get you a, a mark. And <clears throat> if you were failing on 49, that one mark would have made all the difference. Uh, briefly discuss how you might measure, assess the credit worthiness of potential customers. Well, I'm not actually going to write anything. I'll speak it. Read his answer, learn from it. But it, it, it's practical and it, it's dealt with in the notes. It's things like get references from their, their bank, get them to get a letter from their bank saying um, that they've got money, that they're good payers. Uh, perhaps get them uh, to send um, references from other people they buy goods from, other suppliers saying they're good payers. Uh, perhaps uh, look at their financial statements and check that, you know, they've, they've got cash. Um, well, that's enough for three marks. I've said more than enough for it. <laughs>